Morning show here at Arise News. Nigerians are still trying to come to terms with President Buhari's unexpected decision to keep his plans for a second term close to his heart after being sworn in on May the 29th. Moving on from that, though, all expectation now is that the president of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, will move fast to put a cabinet in place. Well, to help us take a look at this and more, is Chief Olabode George, a former military administrator of Ondo State, and also a former deputy national chairman of the uh, People's uh, Democratic Party, and of course, uh, a former uh, general of the Nigerian Army. <laughs> Chief, you are welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Yes, uh, always, thank you for coming to the morning show. Yeah. And it's... for always uh, answering us when we place the call. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> but, sir, let's start with uh, the events of the last two days in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. The inauguration in uh, Abuja. Uh, many Nigerians have been saying, well, they, they were a bit uh, disappointed. One, because the president did not say anything, even if uh, government had said it to be a low key affair. Mm. And then they had expected that the uh, president uh, would hit the ground running uh, instead of uh, going off for a meeting. Although that meeting may have been pre-scheduled, but they were expecting that by now he will have made some statements. After all, in uh, South Africa, President Cyril Ramaphosa has already announced a full cabinet yeah. Yeah. within days of his uh, election. Let me thank you for yes. this opportunity. I, I, I was in a battle. For the inauguration of the new governor of PDP in Oyo State. And after we got back from the stadium, somebody said, look, the president didn't make any... I think one of your colleagues, one, of, one journalist called me and wanted my reaction. And the first thing that came to my mind was, um, well, you know, the whole thing is not over. Uh, maybe as a military, ex-military general, you are always very tactful. Um, that was the first thing that came to my mind, that maybe he's waiting for the outcome of the, the, the Supreme Court. And then somebody said, is that normal? That during Baba uh, Basujo's time, he went straight out. And I said, well, um, Nigerians are going to be apprehensive. And of course we are. Because people would like to know where we are going. Even if the courts may reverse his candidature or his, his, uh, his mandate. Uh, the mandate. But I, I, it is unusual. It is very, very heartbreaking. Because the Nigerian people uh, in the last few years have wondered, do we have a government? There are issues at stake. They want to listen. Where are we going? Are we going through the same route? Or are we going to alter course to do something else that would alleviate the sufferings of the people of this nation? And uh, so it's, it has left everybody in a state of uh, limbo. And uh, when I had the news last night that the president was going to this OIC meeting, hmm. well, as you make your bed, so you lie on it. And it is not, it's not palatable. It's, 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 it's uh, very worrisome, very extremely worrisome. And, um, but I don't belong to their party, so I, I don't know what whether there, there is something that is hidden. Governance in a democratic dispensation uh, is for the people. It's not a military thing. You know, in the military, the orders come from top to bottom. When the commander says, good morning, and even if it's good night, yes, sir, good morning. But this is the expectations of the people. The, you know, civilian administration comes from the bottom up. They want to hear. They want to know. They want even investors want to know which direction are we going. So any delay in whatever form does not portend well for our nation. 
You speak of delay, sir, but the presidency made it quite clear that this May 29th was going to be low-key, was their phrase, and that the real event would be June 12th. So why are there still expectations that a speech would be had? What I would offer to you and to hear your thoughts, was that ceremony not merely a swearing-in? Yeah, even if it's just a swearing-in, everywhere in the world... Did you watch the Indian Prime Minister being sworn in? Narendra Modi. Right. But well, that was Listen, an inauguration, sir. But it, it, He's it, trying to shift the convention. It, it is still the inauguration. Had. Swearing in ceremony is an inaugural because the term ends on the 20, 28th of uh, May. May. So he's starting a new course. He's, he's taking in a new... Uh, a mantle of office. If he was, he, just think of, if it's, it's a reverse role, if Atiku was declared the winner on that day, you think he would talk about waiting till the 29th? I mean, till the 12th, 12th of, of June. June? No. You know, you, you, the, 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 the 12th of June is ceremonial. It's a new um, uh, date given to, to celebrate Democracy Day, isn't it? Yes. Now, you, your term finishes on a particular date. People expect you that you are taking over. Otherwise, what has happened to all the ministers he appointed? Out. We expect new people. The people in the House must also come out and new members be sworn in, you know? So it's, it's, it's time-based. You can have that ceremony of the June 12. You cannot extend half an hour into your into another mandate because that starts from yesterday. Now, all those who won their elections, what do you think? What, what do you think? Why do you think the former governors left? Because it it is sacrosanct. It it's, it's a dead on time. And Nigerians were looking forward to what will be the uh, their fate in the new lineup. I also want to present another argument to you, right. sir, based on your earlier comments yes. about the president attending the IOC summit mm -hmm. in Saudi Arabia. It could also be posited you may disagree or you may agree, that he's trying to be proactive about the security situation that we're facing here and deepen the international cooperation? You know, if I am also a, a strict follower of international politics. Now, if you look at what is happening in the Middle East area there, it's far deeper than us. In our own sub-region, what is the problem? We have no problem with the United States. We have problem within our own country. Which comes first? Looking yes. after outside or taking care of yourself. Self-help is best help. I was told when I was a kid from my mom. So if you think now you want to be there, yeah, if he's uh, looking for some uh, allies and some... Nigeria is not a new nation. We're not a new nation. We have a lot of problems within this country now that must be attended to. Well, I don't think he's going f out for more than, I don't know, 10 days, five days. But whatever it is, you start with the people. Put your people on the track. These are the things I will do for you now so that everybody can still go home and say, well, let us wait and see. But to be quiet... Our guy has not fared well. We belong to the same profession. And if something is not right, we'll say it's not right. If it is right, this is not partisan politics now. What is good is good. Well, hey, you are a new commander taking over somewhere. You wouldn't address your people to tell them uh, this, uh, this will be the new laws and the new areas and the taboos and all that. Lay it out. 12th of June, what is going to happen? On, that's not the date of the mandate. We're celebrating a historical event, 
And it is absolutely political. Because my views about June 12 are totally different from the way we are carrying on and carrying on. Have we learned any lesson about the June 12? What have we learned about it? What have we done about it to ensure there will be no repeat of that experience? Those are the real issues. Now we've celebrated it, we've accepted it, that it is now a law that every 12th of June we will celebrate it. Yes, is it just physical celebration? I want to see the impact, the fallouts. What have we learned as lessons? Have we impacted positively in the minds of the people? Those are issues that are, you know, are germane. Not an issue of just saying, ah, well, we will, we will now go hand over. What do you want to hand over? You sign, you took an oath. Hey, when you take an oath of office, what does that portend? But, sir, when you talk about June 12, yes. yeah, isn't the symbolism itself, the symbolism of a democracy day, June 12, isn't it itself something? And then uh, if you say we haven't learned any lessons, are you saying that 20 years of democracy uh, has not made uh, any difference in the lives of Nigerians? You know, you know the, if you, Ruben, if you look at it, June 12, what year did this happen? 1993. Okay. Now, it took the military on and on and on until Jeram Salami handed over. Okay. It was from that date that he handed over that Nigeria now got back into the civilized uh, Committee of Nations. All right? Now, but my take now is how can we what lessons have we learned from that June 12? What, you know, th this is where I'm going. What lessons have we learned? So that we will now ensure that the mistakes of the past will not be repeated. But since then, nobody has annulled uh, any election by you fiat see, in Nigeria. You, you are a top class. You are very strong in, in your, with your pen. The important thing is not because they have not annulled. What are the lessons to be it's, it, we Let's get back into a political science class. You don't want to. Don't make it just symbolic. It impacted something in the minds of this nation. We have gotten to the level of celeb celebrating that particular day. To remind of certain things that happen. Has there been any changes in our attitude, in our relationship, in the tribal settings in this country, in our, you know, interaction? The gorge between tribes are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, you just spoke about uh, all these uh, laws about uh, weapons and all that. What has happened to us? Is the ship of state not drifting? What, what, what are we doing? I, I, I was in the military. It didn't matter whether you are from the north or south or east. Your comrade is your comrade. It is oneness. It is this nation, Nigeria. But today, you talk to people, you will first of all look at whether you are in kin or you are from another tribe. So his relationships with you are defined. Is that, are we pulling ourselves together? These are the lessons we should have learned. Was Abiola disallowed because he's a Yoruba man? What were the effects? What now are we going to do that that kind of mentality does not come to table again. You know, uh, when the, you know, uh, of course, the minister, the, the last information minister will come up and be drumming all kinds of things. But when you, you know, settle down. Yeah, that's all for the paraphernalia. What are the lessons learned? Nothing. And if anything has been learned, we have not acted in that direction. And I, I am, look, uh, I'm no longer that young man. I'm 
my age now, I keep thinking and look at my kids. You leave school, what is the guarantee? Who is doing something to, to make sure that your future is defined in a positive direction? I tell you, I graduated over 50 years ago from the same University of Lagos. Before we wrote our final exams, we had a job. All we needed to do was pass our exams. And of course, once you got a job, they will give you a car, and government will look for some housing thing to give you. You're living in government quarters. You know that. Who, who does that now? Okay, the population is exploding now. But how many can the government employ? Look, the, the boys now, I was in my office yesterday. They started talking about Yahoo boys, Yahoo boys. And I said, Yahoo boys again? This, how did we get the term 419? You know how long it's been, yes. 419. Now, it means that it has quadrupled. These are young minds, trained, educated, but, and their own profession now is play around with the computer to, to decimate somebody or to steal things and to get things in a cheap way. What is going on? There's definitely a dilapidated state of our yeah. nation, sir. And if we if we look a bit closer, if we come back to the southwest, we have three new governors that have been sworn in. We have Mr. Shehi Makinde in Oyo State. You went for the inauguration. We have Prince Dr. Dapo Abiyadun mm. in Ogun State. And, of course, Mr. Babajide Samolu in Lagos State. Let's speak about that relation and what we can expect over the next four years of their first term in office. Okay. Let, let me, I can talk confidently about Oyo State because it belongs to my party. But I know uh, Sawolu's family, and I know Dagbo. He was in our party before. He, in fact, he contested with uh, the primaries with Benga Daniel. Well, you saw how long ago it was. But I'm happy for him that eventually, you know, because of uh, uh, his resilience, his, his, his uh, consistency, and his struggle for it, now he has gotten the opportunity to serve the people. It is an opportunity to serve. They should not go in the direction of an emperor. Because whatever, whether four years or eight years, there will be a day after. And it is the post-mountain post analysis that will write his name in gold or write it in black. So. We had also been. It's what you have done, people will remember. And because it was a civilian administration who canvassed and, and, and spoke and delivered your manifesto to the people that, look, I will do A, B, C, D for you. All right. And they say, oh, okay. This, you know, all the choices. Uh, Ruben, too, was on the platform of our party in, in the Ogun State. But I believe that um, they are much younger, and the expectations are... You can't believe the, what I saw in Ibano. I'm not from Oyo State, but I have been in charge of the politics of Southwest, and I can see the vibration the total commitment of the people. There must have been over a million people in that stadium. Unbelievable. The traffic extended all the way to the end of Ring Road. I said, wow. People are thinking, Umi today, in other words, this is freshness of the mind. And he delivered his speech. He didn't hide. He told them what he's going to do and the things of the past that impacted negatively on the people, he immediately asked that those things be dropped. Because you're not there on your own. You are there for those people. And I said, the only thing we can do is pray for him. You know, in my part of the world, if a kid is going on a journey that is yet to be defined, you know, because what I mean by that is that you don't know the obstacles that will be on your track. 
people will pray for you, that the Almighty God will always guide you, that you will never behave and believe that it is your kingdom. Because it, uh, the life itself is the kingdom of God. And you should treat everybody on equal basis. Put some smile on the faces of people. What is governance? You must be able to make sure that the people, if they have been at this level economically, raise that level up. Ensure that those poor people who couldn't afford three meals, that they will get something. Their children will go to school, that they are guaranteed that after school they will be able to get some jobs, not mainly government. It could even be uh, these small and medium scales, you know, something to support them to start off. I think that those are the things that um, I, I see and the advice I'll give them. That of the Sawulu in Lagos, I... I wish him the best of luck. Um, and uh, we lived in the same area of Lagos. His uh, uncle is my age group and my colleague. We can only pray for them. Because whether you are a rich man or a poor man, we all live here. There's a saying also in my, from my part of the world, and I know Ruben knows this, if the heavens will fall, there's no escape for anybody. So if it is good, we all benefit. If it is sherry picking, it will be bad. So wish them luck, pray for them, like an elder would do as they are starting their journey. Let there be peace in the land. Yes, sir, what do you think of the attitude of uh, some of the departing governors? Some of them, they picked up uh, quarrels uh, with uh, uh, their will-be successors. Uh, in some of the states, uh, there was no handing over, like Imo State. There was no handing over of any sort in Imo State. Uh, in Ogun State, it was the SSG that handed over, and then many of these governors even boycotted. In, 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 your state, in your head of service. It, it was the head of the service. And the head of service is the wife of, uh, he just, she's just been newly appointed. Appointed, yes. She, she is the wife of uh, our, the, the chairman of the transition committee. Uh, who, Chief, Al, Senator, Ilaka, uh, right. no, 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 mm -hmm. Senator, hallelujah. Uh, okay. And he, he, he was in the Senate on our party, and he's still a member of our party. So it was his wife who wanted to You see, it still shows we are still in the embryonic stage of the, the democratic development. What does it matter? You, are, you know for sure, like I, like I was saying, uh, the, 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 the fixated date. Now, you know for sure you will leave. The elections have been conducted. Your own choice is not a family affair. But it shows that their party is not a political party. There's no discipline in that party. Did you see what happened yesterday? To mm -hmm. the, the so-called chairman mm -hmm. of the party. What, for me, is not a military parade. And I'm going to talk, you know, on this issue of a uh, system of governance. It's not a military parade. Now, how could the guards commander ask the chairman of the party, whatever way you want to look at it, it's not a military parade, which they could have absolute, you know, control on. But this is a, 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 a political event. Mm. And so you must honor the national chairman of the party. That is because he was on that platform, the man who, must, uh, who managed the campaigns and landed a positive result for them to be so humiliated. I, 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 was, I looked at, I saw the vice president. Then the Saraki and the Speaker of the House. Speaker of of the House. Okay. And then the chairman. The three co arms, the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. You know who created that day? Because their party won the election. He wants to stand there to be recognized, to receive the CAC. And he was taken off like a rat that had been caught. He was, he was disgraceful. No matter what you want to talk about it, it will, I'm not a member of their party. That is an indiscipline. 
<laughs> hey, that's the symbol of their party. Being humiliated. And, you know, this perpetual uh, mental state of military, this, do that. In fact, if we do not go back to revisit the system of governance in this country, we will take two steps forward, ten steps back. I have seen both sides. I also got uh, a non-regimental appointment, military governor of Undo State. And then since I left, I've been part of the politics. And I have noticed one major problem. If you go back into history, 1966, the takeover. Since 1960, the system of governance had been, you have your party, you would, you know, people would, you converse, you campaign, and they will vote for you, and you keep going there to do what you said you would do in your manifesto, right? The military doesn't work that way. Top to bottom. Once the other comes from your headquarters, you have no right. You just key into it, yes, sir. You know? But now, how can we have the military brought this central control of uh, governance? Mm -hmm. And it's not working. And it can never work. How the needs of the people from my local government, even the next local government, may not be the same. Why should it be the president who the national, uh, the, um, the, the distribution of the national cake, you get everything into one basket. They shuffle it around. The military created all the number of local governments, remember? And there is a lopsided idea till today. So how can there be peace? Lagos is only 20. Kanu is 44. Plus Jigawa 25. I'm not deriding that my friends in Kano, but why look at the population of Lagos? It's breaking off at the seams. Now, what have you done? And nobody, since the military stamped it and handed it to, to them, nobody has been able to change even a comma in the constitution. Why? Look, these are fundamental problems this nation must resolve. Otherwise, we are just whistling in the dark. We are patching up a lot of things, and things will never go right. Well, hopefully, uh, President Buhari will keep his promise that uh, He's going to. it will not be a babago slow. This time around, even if uh, he's already showing signs that he's very, going very slow. You well, said, we have, you know, we have guy, to I know, I know um, he may me well, but the taste of the pudding is in the eating. Everybody is waiting. But I tell you, now being partisan, coming back to the PDP, we believe we won that last election <laughs> and let the judiciary do their work. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you very much for My coming pleasure. to the morning show. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. We'll take a short break now. When we return, it will be time to talk to the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Oscar Onyema. Stay tuned. <laughs> 